think about for a second this notion of remember, okay? Because that's what's at question here. Does can God you know forget or not remember uh, our transgressions, our sins, presumably that have been forgiven, okay? Welcome back to Stand Firm Project. I'm Father Eli here in uh, beautiful Bismarck, North Dakota, the rector of the cathedral. And we have, I think, an interesting topic for you tonight. As a lot of people know who know me, I love dogs. And in fact, my pooch is right over here off the shot, but uh, I take him almost everywhere. And one of the things I love most about this beautiful creature and dogs in general is their ability to forgive and forget. Like he will literally uh, forget all the pheasants, the roosters that got up that he flushed, pointed, flushed, that I missed, and not hold it against me. Or if I forget to feed him, which doesn't happen very often, PETA. The dogs have this amazing ability, there you are, to just return to this normalcy of love in this relationship and to move on. So uh, this... Clearly, dogs just seem to have this extraordinary ability to forgive and, uh, and forget. Um, how about humans? How do we do in forgiving and forgetting? Well, we can talk a little bit more later, but I think at first glance, we're lousy at forgetting. Uh, what about God? What about God? If we're in the context of reconciliation and that was jesus's mission to reconcile us with the father uh can god when we know he forgives i mean that's the whole project can god can jesus in forgiving sin can he also forget is the question and the topic that we want to discuss and why am i bringing this up i think it's a fascinating topic and we read in, in the prophet Jeremiah. So, scripture. Jeremiah says, I will forgive their transgressions, their wickedness. I will remember their sins no more. The prophet Ezekiel. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. Because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. So the Old Testament, and there are a number of other places, gives us this notion of God speaking to us through the prophets, saying, I'm going to forget the sin. Not only forgive it, I'm going to forget, and it uses this. Is this just cute imagery? Um, the author of Hebrews, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Kind of picking up on that Old Testament theme. And there are other places you can check them out on your own. So biblically, we have this notion of God forgetting sin. And Jesus' main project was to forgive sin. The question for this podcast, is: does God actually also forget? Like, remember no more. This is an interesting thing. Now, let's just, let's just stay. For, it is so wonderful that God forgives sin. Do we agree? Amen. Amen. I think it would be an even more wonderful thing, not that there needs to be anything more wonderful than that we can have our sins forgiven, that we can be pulled out of the, the trench, that the deep hole that we put ourselves in and have a chance at eternal life. But if we could wonder for a moment, can, can and does God actually not only forgive, but also forget? Like forget no more, like completely destroy where do we get this notion of? It's a biblical notion of forgetting. But do you recall also the, the beautiful story of, of a French sister in pre le monial in France, somewhere south of Paris, I believe. Uh, this young sister who was, had, had recently, uh, some years ago, joined the convent and was praying in the chapel, and all of a sudden, this beautiful image began to appear to her. This person... Uh, and she wasn't sure, being the humble sister that she was, future saint. 
she wanted to find out, not presume who this is, test the spirits a little bit, which is always wise. So she goes to her spiritual director, Father Claude, and says, someone has been appearing to me in my private chapel time. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know who it is. Father Claude says, we'll test it. We'll find out whether it's God of God or the unsavory alternative. And she says, all right, sister, the next time he appears, I want you to ask this thing a question. And I want you to ask this thing. What were the sins that I confessed, Father Claude said, at my last confession? And based on the response, we'll know. Because in my last confession, I went to Jesus and shared with him my sins. And easy. She says, okay, Father. And then she runs back to the chapel some days later, whatever it was. And again, has this apparition, this, this, this person, this beautiful person, but un, still unsure. And in dialogue, says, I, I have a question for you. So sure, uh, my spiritual director has asked me to ask you the sins that he confessed at his last confession. And this person who had appeared before her said, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't remember. Sister Margaret Mary was a bit dejected, doesn't know. Can't be anything special here. Goes back to Father Claude, and he said, how'd it go? And she said, you know, he appeared to me again, and I asked him what sins you had confessed at your last confession. And he said, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember. And so it, I'm sure it's not Jesus. Father Claude said, on the contrary, sister, the person that's been appearing to you is Jesus himself. Because if it was anyone other than Jesus, if it was the enemy... He would have recounted all of my sins, not only my last confession, the sins of my whole life, and made a mockery out of, out of my life, having fixated on sin. But the fact that he doesn't know and doesn't remember is the clearest sign that this person who's appearing to you with his glowing, beautiful heart is Jesus, and that's the reality of his sacred heart. Cute, huh? An anecdotal, maybe? Or is it real? Does Jesus really forget? Or is he just wink, wink, hey, sister, I don't know. And actually, in his omniscience, know every little thing, every little detail of Father Claude's life from, saint, from sinner to saint and just say, I'm just not going to talk about that. Or somewhere... In his mercy and goodness, as a truly God and truly man, so divine intellect and will, married uh, to a human intellect and will that is now ascended to the Father, is it possible that God could actually forget? So that when we meet him face to face, which will happen to each and every one of us, without exception, we will all meet him face to face. Of this, I'm absolutely certain. It's called the particular judgment. In that moment, will Jesus look at me and in his consciousness, whatever his awareness, have all the sins of my past right before him and just kind of shy away from it? Or could it be possible that in his mercy, that when I meet Jesus face to face, that every sin that I've confessed, okay, validly, with, with at least imperfect contrition, uh, will actually be destroyed, gone from him. Is it possible that the things, our sins, that are those things that are not of God and not of his will, are it's somehow not retained in his human and divine intellect? I think so, and I want to believe so. But it's an interesting question to ask. And there's a lot, probably a lot of interesting discussion that can come from it. So that's the question that we've posed uh, today is, can God, we know he forgives. It's the purpose of, of the life of Jesus on earth and his, and his mission to us from the Father. Can he also forget so much so that when I meet him 
and he looks at me. He doesn't see the pathetic me that I remember right now, all 45 years of it. Or does he look at me and see only the goodness that he created? And I want to believe that's so, and I think it's so. Why? I, I don't think that Scripture or St. Margaret Mary Alico, that was the story, St. Claude de la Colombière was the director and I'm just putting myself out here on a limb. I think that what they explain in Scripture and the experience of St. Margaret isn't just cute. I think that it's actually the way that the divine heart, the sacred heart of, of Jesus, and the movement of love actually works. Uh, that you can actually forget sin, especially if you're motivated by love and you make a decision that it's not that I'm just remembering this and I'm just not going to talk about it right now, but I'm actually so overwhelmed by love that I don't even think about it, that it's actually gone. I just had my truck into the shop the other day. I won't say where, and I had two $5 bills. This was about a week ago. Two $5 bills in the center console, and before I handed off the keys, I looked at those $5 bills and said, this is probably stupid that I left them there. Uh, but I did. And when I came back, they were gone. And for a moment, I was angry. And then I made a choice. It's 10 bucks. i I'm not going to waste the time preoccupied about these $10 bills. And in fact, I had completely forgot about it. Completely forgot about it until today when the subject of $10 being stolen came up in one of our discussions. I had forgotten about it. I wanted to be so free from that moment and not be weighed down by it that it doesn't even matter to me. Now, if at a human level, this, is, this might be possible. You think of the offenses that people have committed against us that we don't want to carry, we don't want to remember. I think in the divine mind and, the, and in the, the sacred heart of Jesus, there is this ability, and I'm just speculating here, but that sin, that which is not of God, and that's the definition of sin, it's a thing that I do that is not motivated by love, which is a person, that somehow in his divine mind, uh, there cannot be this retention of things that are not of him, that his his love is so rarefying and purifying that even though I can remember and you can remember and spouses remember and friends remember the things that we do against each other, that just maybe somehow when you're so motivated by love, which is a person that's love himself, that somehow those things which have been offered to him with contrition are somehow gone or that image of, of, of our sins being a drop in the ocean of God's mercy, that that actually happens and it's not just a cute analogy. That that drop of ink or whatever it is that is so dissolved by this mass of, of a purifying agent that it's physically impossible to ever get that one drop back. I think it's true. I want it to be true. And I want to believe that we humans uh, will experience that love in Jesus when we meet him, having confessed our sins. And I want to believe that that sort of divine love is also possible for us here on earth, so much so that a young couple who maybe experienced the worst thing possible, right, infidelity, maybe early in age, that if they become so motivated by love and forgiveness, that something happened at 25, at their 60th wedding anniversary, at the ripe old age of 85, that the spouse who had been cheated on can have been so motivated by love over the course of 60 years that that thing that was so traumatic, so painful, so dark, so long ago, doesn't even resonate. That the, that's the power of love to actually cast out the darkness and to actually destroy that which is not love, which we call sin. I think humans, 
I think we should strive for that. I think we can maybe attain it. And if we can even come close to attaining it on a human level, I have to believe that the scriptures aren't just um, cute, sentimental uh, hints at God's goodness or that St. Margaret Mary's experience of the Sacred Heart of Jesus wasn't just a cute analogy, but is the reality that if I confess my sin, Jesus' power so overwhelms it that it's actually destroyed so much so that he uh, no, does not retain it in his divine intellect and therefore, when he sees me, and as he sees me walking out of, in the confessional, because that's who I meet there, that there's nothing but goodness. Even though I have work to do, and I have the temporal punishment due to sin and purgatory, to all, that's on me. That's not on God. That's on me becoming perfect. It's not on him getting over the thing. Let's just think about for a second this notion of remember, okay? because that's what's, at question here, does can God you know forget or not remember uh, our transgressions, our sins, presumably that have been forgiven, okay, that have been that have been uh, confessed and forgiven in, in a beautiful relationship. Uh, so to forget is to not remember, you know. And as soon as we start talking about not remembering, we're, we're already we're already bringing in the presupposition of time, right? So I forget something at point B that happened at point A. So one of the things for our thought and, 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 and kind of speculation too is, it, wait a minute, it, as soon as we bring in these physical limitations, uh, by that I mean time, uh, God's outside of time. So even in our terms, it's the only terms that we can speak about, the divine is in you know, space and, and time. But He's already outside of that. And we understand sees all things as, as a moment. And so for God to forget, we're already putting a limitation on that. Or for him to remember us in, we're putting a limitation because that presumes a movement from time A to time B. And so maybe within that spirit, it, it that's how he doesn't remember. But in a moment that has been washed in his mercy, sees it all as one. So sees what I've, what I've confessed, looks back, looks at my life in the present because he sees all as one uh, and just sees the good because he's destroyed the bad. So he actually, it's already destroyed it and it's not about this cerebral thing of, well, you did that when, in 1985 and you did that in 1991 that he's, so, he's outside of time and is just seeing the person and not, this, not a timeline of events but looks to the person as he did when he walked the earth because he had this tremendous ability. Remember, they said that, that humans see the outward appearance, but God looks into the heart. Oh, if the heart is actually contrite, and he doesn't see just the sequence of events on a time like, like we do, but we're limited by time. We have no other option. God, now having, Jesus having ascended to his Father, is now outside of time and no longer bound by those limitations. Uh, so maybe that... Uh, helps to explain this notion of him uh, not remembering just because that itself presumes a limitation of, of, of time, which he has now stepped out of while being present to it. Good, so to, yeah, to bring those together, the, the couple who, uh, after 60 years of, after a moment of forgiveness, a moment of, of betrayal, let's say, has been motivated so much by love that they're, modus operandi for 60 years after that has been this love, this growing, developing love aided by God's grace uh, and, and, and not dementia in the forgiveness, but just overwhelmed by love uh, in the timeline of humanity. I want to believe that that's true, that, that, that over 60 years of, of something uh, committed, confessed, contrite, forgiven, that love can so overwhelm this, this moment in the, in, the, in the course of, let's say, 60 years, which is a long time for a married couple, but let's just, we're taking an extreme case, let's take an extreme period of time, that, that love can be so overwhelming that at 85 years that the, the spouse who was cheated on is, just doesn't even think of it anymore and would actually have to almost be reminded. 
And in being reminded would say, I don't even want to think about that. I'm so past it, it doesn't hurt. It's, it's just almost as if, it, if it's nothing. Let's just say that that's possible, and I really believe it is, and I hope it is, because I believe in the goodness of humanity because we were created good. That if that's possible in a 60-year time span of, of humans, you know, broken, limited humans, so much more. What about the infinite? What about Jesus infinitely smothering us uh, with his obviously pure motivation of motiv- motiv- motivation of love, smothering us with with his own self, which is love, on an infinite scale, which is the way he experiences things. We can't live in him to time. That if it's possible here, and I think it is, and it I, it should be, how much more? Not just in a in a sentimental way, um, but in a real way that it's just, it's nothing to me. That stuff is actually nothing to me. I'm not even hiding it. I'm not even dodging it. It's gone. And all he sees is love. How beautiful. And I think true. Forgive and forget. Uh, Rufus forgives and forgets my transgressions often. We humans, we're not so good at it. Maybe we should be better, at least trying. I believe that what Scripture tells us is true, and I think that's the goodness of the heart of Jesus, that that's how powerful his mercy is, that he's not going to remember. He's not just going to not mention that it can no longer, that which has been confessed and absorbed by, by his sacred heart, his pure side, is actually destroyed. And then I look forward to that meeting with him each day and the confessional and that final meeting could be good. Can God forgive? Yes. Can he forget? I think so. I hope so. I'd be interested to hear your comments. Thanks for watching Stand Firm Project. Hopefully another interesting topic for you on this day, keep uh, stay tuned, like this, uh, subscribe, do all those wonderful things that you do in social media. Great things are happening here. I hope on this on this site, hopefully, it's been a benefit to you. Thanks.